Hi everyone, this is Lada from astrolada.com and I'm here to do your July 2018 horoscopes together with Mila, Mila Striman. Say hi Mila. She's been my source of strength because the July horoscopes 2018 and August, these are the two most extreme months of 2018. Guys, lives will be transformed. Fates will take a new direction. Changes on an epochal way because we have two huge eclipses happening. And we also are going to... Hey, Mila! And we have Mars retrograde and Mercury going retrograde. I would walk you through all of this. I just wanted you first to have some fun, see Mila to start on a positive tone and we will end also on a positive note talking about Jupiter going direct and how you can benefit from that but be prepared for one of the most intense exciting months possibly also the most difficult months July and August together. I'm just gonna drop Mila to my mom. Hey say bye Mila bye wish everyone luck during the eclipses Wish them luck to have the best results possible. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. And why are these months, especially July and August, so crazy? Well, people who are yearning for a change, for a big change in their life, people that want to totally transform their thinking and certain areas of their lives, they might actually have a blast this month and consider it one of the most powerful and one of the most positive experiences of their life, but eclipses always bring some crisis of a, of a sort, you know. And eclipses, and I'm making the same intro for everyone, for all the 12 signs. I want you to listen to it because it gives us a lot of insights. And then I'll speak specifically how it affects each of the 12 signs. But before I start, I just wanted to tell you that on the 8th of July, we have a webinar with Nikola Stojanovic on what in astrology gives the richest people. Nikola Stojanovic is a favorite of many of you so i'm looking forward to have you on that webinar preceding the eclipses and the first eclipse is a solar eclipse in july and the 11th uh, which is caused together by rahu rahu is the north node of the sun and eclipses are about karmic events Things that you have like a contract about, uh, in pre, you know, even before you're born, the big events that happen in our life, the big transformations of consciousness, the big leaps to the next level. And sometimes, often it happens through crisis because only big transformation comes through crisis. This is the nature of humans. Very few humans are inspired towards change because everything is okay and they're inspired to make it even better or to grow spiritually. The solar eclipse is weaker though. The solar eclipse is weaker than the lunar eclipse that follows. But the whole July, I'll be more careful about starting things like buying properties or signing contracts or, you know, uh, because especially a few days before and after an eclipse, it's the light is hidden. The light of the sun or the moon are hidden. And it means that there is a lot of confusion. Uh, the the uh, eclipses act as portals for invisible forces to come and create chaos and out of this chaos, new beginnings and changes can build. But you don't want to make big decisions, especially when it comes to the second eclipse, the lunar eclipse, which is the strongest in 120 years eclipse. The lunar, the most strong lunar eclipse in 120 years uh, that is closest to Earth. Uh, and it's going to be seen in most of Africa, Europe, and uh, in Asia as well. Extremely powerful eclipse. I would advise you a week before this eclipse and a week after the July the 27th. And then there is another eclipse in August. This summer, there are three eclipses in a row, guys. Very karmic events are about to happen. And uh, very fated events. I mean, things that happen on eclipses are people getting pregnant, birth of babies, uh, uh, you know, things that... And, and usually within the month of the eclipse. You can be feel it a month before, a month after, sometimes even two months after. But this is when our lives turn around. And some eclipses take from us because they want to teach us about detachment. That will be the lunar eclipse. It will be about losing things, letting go of things. And some eclipses give us things so we can further incarnate and so we can fulfill certain desires that we have because the purpose of the eclipses is our spiritual and soul evolution. Uh, and the evolution of the soul happens by first, there are two ways that it happens. That our desires that we have are fulfilled so we realize that we've been chasing an illusion. For example, you really want to be rich or you really want to have that guy or you really want, you've all you wanted, always wanted was to have a child. All you always wanted was to have this business. And Raku eclipses, which is the first one, the solar eclipse, gives us those things. And once we have them, we realize that it's an illusion, that it does not 
uh, is did not fu fully create what happiness is for us. So we're still searching inside. But Rahu gives. So in Western astrology, we tend to like Rahu because it's a eclipse. Uh, 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 when Rahu is involved in an eclipse, we receive things, we get things. And usually, again, though, they're preceded by some crisis because a big change and big transformation always involves some kind of crisis. Uh, and sudden, it's usually very surprising when eclipses come, but usually it's something that you've had to do for a long time, but you've been postponing or you didn't have the willpower. And now uh, other sources, other powers take over and start acting through you. And, you know, like eclipses bring things to um, culmination, so to speak. And maybe you've wanted something for a long time and this Rahu eclipse now can give it to you, but it might be again preceded by some kind of crisis, but it will be some kind of new beginnings because solar eclipse is when the sun and the moon are together, creation of something new, female and male, polarities are joining together to create new life. But because of Rahu, which is considered a demonic influence, it happens through some kind of shakeup in our life. You know, and but this is when it, it's contracted. It's it's what had to happen. There were two eclipses on my moon in the last year and a half, and the moon is motherhood, and I got pregnant both times, uh, maybe a month before, a month after. But usually, the eclipses it doesn't mean it will happen on the 11th of July. It, it means that if something new comes into your life, it might come a month before or a couple of months after. But the eclipses are like those beacons that say that something fated is going to happen in your life. And as I said, the Rahu eclipse, the first one, brings something through crisis, sudden new beginnings, uh, transformations, because Rahu and Ketu that cause the eclipses, the south and lunar, the north and uh, south lunar nodes of the moon, the mythology about them is that they were uh, Nagas which is snakes, dragon. There were a dragon that was cut in two. And uh, the, you know, the symbology of dragons is that they shed their skin and snakes as well for transformation. So the big thing to remember about eclipses is big transformations and they're never easy. It means about the light is hidden for a little bit. So it's almost like <clears throat> you might feel like something like a metaphorical death of some sort, a death of, of a part of your life, a death of an old part of you, but so that again the sun or the moon can be reborn when the darkness of the eclipse is removed from them and because chaos ensues first of some sort before again the the king and the queen the sun and the moon can take reign over your life and make it run according to you know a kind of more predictable uh, and uh, uh, normal patterns but while around the eclipse a couple of months around i would say some of you would feel it already from june some would feel it into august as well but July is the most intense. There is this darkening. Uh, people like start to get confused or to change direction in their life. They get sudden changes and transformations are starting to happen. And while it's dark, there are a lot of fears. And we're like, what does the future hold? Rahu eclipses prepares for the future. They bring new karma. And again, it can bring a lot of fears. When I got pregnant both times, I was full of fears, you know. It's a crisis on the mentality, even if it gives you something. It's a crisis on your whole lifestyle, on your whole um, expectation for whatever you wanted for yourself. And then the, there's something new that comes that is fated that's totally going to change your life. So this rapid eclipse on the July the 11th will bring something like that. It gives things... Uh, it gives uh, transformations, but uh, through some kind of sudden crisis, uh, new karma is created, then strong passions. Rahu is the mouth of the dragon. The dragon has two parts, Rahu and Ketu. The mouth of the dragon is Rahu. It's insatiable. It's something that we want to grab from life more and more. So often, sometimes people can even fall in love around eclipses, and especially Rahu eclipses, in a crazy way that they lose their mind. And because of that, their whole life transforms and they can do something passionate and intense that's almost like eclipse of the mind. You know, the sun is our conscious ability to make conscious choices. Uh, and Rahu darkens that. The eclipse happens on the sun, so you kind of lose your mind over some with strong passions and stuff like that while the next eclipse july 27th lunar eclipse is um, as i said the strongest eclipse is going to be seen especially if you're in the path of the eclipse if you are able to see that eclipse your life will definitely be so strongly impacted but for the whole of the world i warn you quite an intense eclipse it's conjunct mars and mars is retrograde mars is a very violent star when it's retrograde it's much closer to earth so and ketu means past life when an eclipse 
involves Ketu, it's about past lifetimes or past karma. Something from the past and especially that creates a lot of frustration or angry reaction on us. So kind of a old slumbering karma of anger can come to the surface during that time, a week before or a whole month after that. I would say the whole month you know, uh, this is active, uh, and you can feel like strong, intense emotions, and also it has a square to Uranus, the eclipse, by the way, and Uranus and Mars ultimately want to give freedom and liberation to a person from something, they make you so angry about something, Mars especially retrograde, you're like, I can no longer tolerate that, there's so much like pent up fire that is starting like volcano to erupt, be careful not to erupt and lose your minds again, lose your heads, when the, when the moon is eclipsed, uh, the weeks before and after, we can do crazy stuff that we regret. I mean, the last time the moon was, uh, Mars was with Keto, um, there were quite some famous um, suicides of uh, Anthony Bourdain and Kate Spade on the exact day. So people can lose their mind, and this time is much more powerful because Mars is retrograde, so much closer to Earth, much more intense. The influences are way more karmic. It's bringing anger, pain, Mars is all those things, from the very bottom of your soul, from past lifetimes, from earlier periods in your life, something from the past, it rules the past, this kind of anger and this pain is going to erupt now on the surface, but the ultimate goal of Keto Eclipses is to release it, to release that anger, or to use that anger to detach yourself from something from the past that is no longer necessary in your life, so there will be powerful endings, Losing something, Ketu is about letting go of something, I don't know if you see it well here, but letting go of something, Ketu is about, is the tail of the dragon, while well, Rahu takes something, that's why we usually get something in life during Rahu eclipses, or around the months around it, in Ketu eclipses we let go of something, is the tail where you excrete you know, so where old karma, the baggage, we have, we have, we all carry a lot of baggage with us, and that's key to the karma, and we need to travel lightly on our path, uh, and when the baggage becomes too much, it's like we can't move forward, but we're so afraid to lose something, we're so afraid to lose a relationship, we're so afraid to lose a safety of some sort, we're so afraid of, to lose a job or whatever, and Ketu comes, and there is a Ketu eclipse, and says, enough, you know, yes, you've been thinking about that, but you haven't had the strength to do it now, you're letting it go, and there is no choice, power stronger than you take over, karmic powers, and you have to drop that baggage that you've been carrying with you from past lifetimes, or from past experiences, or something that is no longer necessary in your life, it, it can almost be severed, just like Ketu and Rahu, the head of the dragon and the tail was severed by the gods, because they tried to be immortal, you know, the same way something can, sometimes even literally, when there is an eclipse of Ketu on someone's ascendant, or something, of the body, there might be a part of the body that gets severed, that's very extreme cases, hopefully not for you, you know, you know, it's happening on my ascendant, I hope I don't come with one leg less or something by the end of that, but it's about letting go of certain chapter of your life, and it's going to happen in a violent way, or it's going to happen because Mars is our willpower, and it's going to happen because we get angry, or because we're like, okay, now I have much more stronger willpower to do that, and Uranus is also about cutting connections, and about changing something in a powerful way, uh, in a sudden way, uh, so this eclipse is really what I'm going to focus on a lot in those predictions, but ending about karma, so the positive thing of it is, yes, we can lose something, we have to change totally the direction of something, let go of something, but we can also release old karma, that is heavy baggage, we can also release, uh, complete something, we, we can, if we've been burdened with a karmic disease, or with a karmic um, uh, unhealthy obsession or something, we might finally be able to detach from it in some way, it's a big karmic conclusion, and for every person it's in a different area of their life, just be careful for very extreme emotional reactions, because the moon is our feelings, it's being eclipsed, it feels as if kind of, some people might become hysterical, panicky around that time, but remember this is a period of big alchemical transmutation that's happening in your subconscious, the layers of your karma are being rearranged, are being cleansed, are being, you know, uh, uh, kind of like gods and powers above us uh, rearranging those things for us, and it's fearful, it's scary, it can feel confusing, it can feel ex exhilarating for <laughs> some people, you know, it is rare, but for some people they can, and after after that, 
I guess even in August it continues, but we'll speak about that in the August videos. Uh, and so, yes, I just want you to remember, yes, it will be an intense month for every person. These things can be happening, those big transformations that the snakes, Rahu and Ketu, the eclipses want to create in our life. Uh, the, the hiding of the light from us, you know, you the basically the sun and the moon, our consciousness, our feelings and our consciousness, when those two are blocked and hidden by uh, the eclipses, which is what Rahu and Ketu, these are the dragons that swallow the sun or the moon, according to mythology, we lose, darkness happens, it's like a metaphorical death and the new rebirth of light comes again, the light of the sun or the moon. So our life comes up out of the darkness emerges after the eclipses on a new level, on a new direction. So big transformations, guys. Ultimately, it can be used for good people that have been craving for transformations for a long time. It might be now for them. And of course, it's very hard to predict how exactly eclipse will affect a person. Even if I have your chart specifically, I can say more, more uh, who exactly will be will feel it the most if you have a planet exactly on those degrees you know this one is at four degrees Aquarius so anything and this one is at 20 degrees uh, Cancer uh, but again everyone will be affected somehow they have those degrees somewhere in their horoscope certain area of their life and I'd like you to check your ascendant sign for this prediction and of course your sun sign but always the ascendant sign is more important and of course not everyone will have those big transformations they eclipses twice a year every year but still let let's see where you can go through big changes big transformations so for you cancers the eclipse is happening the first eclipse on the 11th of july is happening in your sign so for some cancers and for cancers generally is the start of a new you, of a new chapter in your life. And actually the eclipses in cancer will carry on for two more years. There will be a few more eclipses over the next couple of years in cancer. So it's like the beginning of a transformation of a new personality, of a new path in life a new direction in life it can feel like the rebirth of you like the shedding of old skin and the creation of a new personality of a new direction of a new uh goals in life in on many different levels because it's happening in your own sign that it affects the whole life of cancer so it can be exciting but also because cancers are attached to the past as we know um they like things to be rhythmic to be just like the moon is, you know, it grows in rhythmic and grows and becomes small, just like the tides. But it can be some time of chaos initially. And for the next two years, every time around an eclipse in Cancer, you might start feeling like an old part of you is dying and a new one is being born, reborn. And it can be a bit of a painful process of death and rebirth, but it's ultimately exhilarating because this eclipse in particular will bring you something new. Well, as I said, it it's gives things, gives new beginnings, makes you more ambitious. A lot of cancers uh, will start having more passion for life, more desire to grab from life with full hands. Uh, and it's not going to be an overnight process. But as I said, this is the initial stage, and especially cancers, it's people with sun in cancer that are born around the 11th, I would say uh, from the 9th, 8th. Uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14th of July can feel this very intensely. Or if you have your ascendant around the 20th degree in Cancer, which I would say from the 15th till the 25th degree in Cancer, if you have your ascendant, you can find out from my birth chart calculator the ascendant and its degree if it's in Cancer. So the change, but it can be preceded by some sudden crisis. It can be preceded by a crisis that, you know, you feel like something old has to die in you and something new to be reborn. And the urge to appropriate a new persona, a new direction in life. Uh, you have to be careful about your physical body, especially if it's happening on, you know, if you're born around those degrees. Uh, if your birthday falls around there, it means the next year will be very pivotal. New moon on your birthday, especially when it's amplified by an eclipse. Uh, and an eclipse of Rahu can indicate that the whole new year for the next 12 months for you, born around those days, will be on a new 
tangent, totally new direction. Raku brings something new, something foreign, appropriating something different that you've never done before, uh, new self-definition of yourself and somehow. But always be careful around and you might feel anxious because new things, they're unknown. They're like the dark area on the map where we don't know what it is. And in ancient maps, they would, when, they would, when they haven't discovered certain lands, they would say dragons be here. They would ride dragons because they thought all kind of monsters are there. So it can create and generate a lot of fears when the period around an eclipse, if it happens in your sign in particular, uh, and you're very sensitive to eclipses generally because you're ruled by the moon and the, eclipse, the moon is always involved in eclipses. And there can be those fears of the unknown, of the uncertainty of the future. You can start feeling like you're losing your cool uh, and that the feelings, the emotions are flying around, that you're in darkness, but something new is brewing up for you there, guys. Something new, something that will take you on the next stage of your life, on the next level. There will be big transformations. You will receive something within a few months or possibly very close to the eclipse. Uh, strong passions arise and Arahu is very acquisitive, is very ambitious, is very driven. So this can awaken in you such feelings as well preceded again as i said by some kind of initial shock sometimes you know uh and uh, what else and the physical maybe they can give the passion and the 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 first house if it's your ascendant that it's in cancer or even the sun or the moon it can indicate even transformations of your whole uh body how you look that will take over the next few months or a couple of years, it will take that you change your appearance in a big way, in a very foreign way, uh, that your new karma is being created that will affect you for many years ahead. And again, as I said, this is just the first of a few eclipses in Cancer. If you don't fully feel it very strongly this time, it's probably because your sun or ascendant or moon is a bit further from those degrees, but it will get to you as well. You can feel new temptations as well. That's something where Rahu awakens the passions in a powerful way. It's, it wants to grab from life with full hands and it wants it's insatiable and some temptation, something foreign, different, exotic can appear in your life that you can't help yourself. And, but in the process, you can create some chaos. In the process, you can, you know, create some, you know, try not to basically lose your head there and do some crazy stuff but it, but it might be part of the process basically and remember when there was i'll tell you i had a uh, there was two eclipses on my moon uh a uh, couple of years a, a year ago and before that and the moon is motherhood so if your moon is in cancer it can indicate motherhood for example for some of you or new direction in home or house or if it's your son it can be new beginnings in, re in regards to your career and goals in life or in regards to important males in your life like uh, suddenly new male appears that is very karmic that you're meant to create new karma with that can be uh, you know that can be a pivotal figure in changing the direction in your life I cannot say if this figure will stay in your life for long or no uh, but it's gonna play some pivotal role and because it's the sun usually it might be some male figure and the sun if you, your sun is in cancer can be like a new direction in regards to your career becoming more ambitious it might be preceded by some crisis um, before you get on that new path again so you know <laughs> hopefully you're getting what i'm trying to say and then the next eclipse uh, which you probably feel very strongly emotionally because it's a lunar eclipse and the moon rules cancer. So when the moon is eclipsed, even if it doesn't affect you directly in your life because it's in Aquarius, it's nowhere near cancer, you as, as, as a water sign will definitely feel the emotions again becoming intense because it's with Mars. You might feel more anger or you might feel like more um, desire... Uh, uh, need to detach from something suddenly and cut off something suddenly but it's about letting go of something and let's see specifically what house or what area of your life it can affect this eclipse in july 27th which can be felt a month before and a couple of months after happens in the house in the eighth house for cancers uh, which is other people's resources on the material level so some of you might have to let go of uh, a source that is coming to them some resource from some place. For example, if you have a business and you're sourcing your, uh, you know, your materials for that business or for manufacturing, whatever, from somewhere, you might realize that uh, it's no longer, you cannot 
source it from there anymore, so you have to let go of that. It can also indicate a uh, powerful change of feelings in regards to eighth house matters. Eighth house is connected to intimacy. So there might be some kind of a releasing some powerful intimate connection. That can be actually good. If you want to be released from some uh, obsession, eighth house rules obsessions and sexual obsessions and when the two souls are very enmeshed karmically and even if you haven't seen someone for years or months, the eighth house is where we're kind of connected on an intimate, almost like a cult level with someone else where the souls are merged, uh, like where parts of you are connected to parts of someone else and you might feel like you're dragging still the energy of that person with you. Uh, it's a very occult house, as I said. Maybe uh, eight house, the house of sexual intercourse. We uh, basically connect to other people's karma through sexual intercourse or through very uh, intense interactions with someone. But if you have, for example, some kind of still lingering attachment, strong attachment sexually to someone, even if they're out of your life, this can be very liberating. This eclipse can allow you to release this attachment on the deep occult alchemical level that is connecting your uh, energies together. You can release it somehow. And if you want to do that, do a ritual around the 27th of July during the full moon eclipse uh, to release energy of an old person, sexual energy, especially of someone who you've been very enmeshed with and you still can't let go of them and you still carry the pain and Keto is about releasing, letting go. Maybe do a ritual or uh, take a black stone and like an onyx and put it uh, in your panties <laughs> underneath a pad or something because it can absorb the psychic connection with another person uh, and release and liberate you from that. And it can also indicate ending of old karma that was sexual old karma that will connect with someone on a deep level. But also the eighth house is trauma, where we store the pain, where we store the, you know, where we store uh, kind of, painful and dark experiences like our shadow side that it's lurking there and Ketu can allow you to release some of that, this this Ketu eclipse basically, this Ketu lunar eclipse and you can have a change of feelings towards those things uh, and 8th house is also the house of other people's resources as I said they might be like the ending of some kind of a obligation with another person financially or it might be that you lose certain uh, as a, a part of resources that are connected to another person you might be like you might have to pay alimony uh to someone that can create very powerful angry feelings or something that you have to give up something and you have to give away to another person something or that you lose something through another person uh, but you have to adopt an attitude of detachment and you have to let it go or on a positive level it can be completing of something where you were giving resources to someone or someone was giving resources to you you might end that um, karmic contract in some way so you're no longer either you giving or you receiving resources from there um, and they can be kind of a big psychological the eighth house is very psychological house it's our deep motivations uh, it's a very occult psychological house so there might be some crisis and deep transformation that starts happening on you on an emotional level that's almost hidden that you don't realize how it's happening and why it's happening but it can intense it can uh, indicate very powerful feelings coming to the surface to be released in some way and they might involve a lot of violence or angry feelings as well because mars is involved and the south node is quite violent when it's with uh, mars and you have to release that and suddenly and suddenly because it's both Mars and Uranus are very fast planets uh, kind of release and cut connections with that and move emotionally less burdened with those um, karmic enmeshments uh, but again it can indicate some kind of loss it can indicate loss through taxes it can indicate loss uh, and uh, letting go of some kind of inheritance so it can indicate loss through some kind of uh, insurance sometimes or the completion of such case if you've been you know trying to get some insurance money it might be the completion of this process you know suddenly and fast in some way and you, you move on and you don't deal with that anymore um, and the eighth house is a house of powerful transformation going over the bridge from one state to another this eclipse can churn the waters uh, of the subconscious for you and allow you to if you've been stuck for example in grieving or death 
uh, which is the realm of the eighth house, death, uh, or grieving from a divorce, or some big transformation in life, this eighth house can trigger it now for your cancers to be released. That's the positive thing of this eclipse that can happen, that it can kind of escalate and release some grieving process that comes to the surface. So maybe even you, you haven't grieved well for you know for something for for divorce for for losing of something or someone um through a big crisis in life and all those feelings of pain and anger and frustrations can come to the surface to be released in some way and as i said almost like it can happen as an invisible process but it helps you to get over some crisis or some trauma that happened to you even long time in the past uh and to to kind of close the chapter to 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 this door the door to this chapter in your life um okay so whew, intense huh? uh and on another level we have uh, mercury going retrograde in your second house of finances that's happening towards the end of the month uh from the 24th approximately but i would say from the 20th you might start feeling it try not to lose possession second house is the things that you own uh, assets possessions uh, you might have to rebudget maybe you might have to mercury is about planning organizing when it goes retrograde you have to plan better and reorganize and change certain things in regards to how you spend money where you put your money maybe move them from one bank to another don't take make any risky investments while mercury is retrograde in your second house maybe invest in something that you've thought to invest before in the past and it comes back to you now as an idea but nothing new uh, financially so to speak uh, you might have to revise certain omissions that you've done in regards to your finances and resources uh, rearrange certain things uh, or in regards to your possessions you know maybe something that you've lost can come back to you returning back mercury or uh, also the second house is what we eat and some of you might be rethinking and replanning what food you put in your mouth and renegotiating with themselves how they're going to feed themselves okay and then uh and, and i would say also it's a good idea to if you have insurance for possessions it's good because mercury retrograde can mean like you know something might get damaged or lost or something you know but in the final results of Mercury retrograde is that you, um, by seeing the mistakes that you've made in regards to resources, possessions, and things like that, you can fix it and then move forward with more sense of organization and more sense of um, um, clarity in regards to those resources. But once Mercury returns direct. Uh, and let's end with the most positive news. Jupiter is turning direct. And it's happening in your fifth house of romance. If some romantic situation has been complicated or it's been on standstill or it's been requiring more efforts, now when Jupiter starts turning direct gradually from the 10th on July, slowly it will start moving in the right direction or you'll have more clarity about it and uh, things will start improving there. If there were some complications in the life of your children or something in regards to fertility uh, and some delays, they'll start, uh, these situations will start improving as well and moving forward and new opportunities will start um, coming from that if you've been working very hard on some creative project behind the scenes during the jupiter retrograde fifth house is our creativity something that so that we use our intelligence with for something that it doesn't have to be just painting or writing you know uh, or making music creative projects can be making a website can be anything that you you create like a baby on your own it may be a business plan you're creating but that's unique that's uh, your own unique idea that you've been working on and if there were some delays or complications on that Jupiter turning direct will start helping you will start showing you the results of the hard work that you've put in regards to that or if there were some delays it will start improving and moving forward and on that positive note hopefully you know uh, wow huge month very interesting <laughs> and I will see you next month cancers